hi and welcome back to the channel and to the tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about a number of uh, subroutines functions that can handle strings uh, in Perl. There are a couple of basic ones, like um, let's switch to the other window. So there are a couple of basic uh, functions, for example, lc will return the lowercase version of a string, uc will return the uppercase version, and length that will return the number of characters in that string. So in this time I uh, wrote a couple of example files. Uh, what you can see here is that str, which is a string, uh, hello is a capital L here and the lowercase l, and then if you run the script, uh, let's run it just so you can see that it actually works, so you see that the first uh, will return hello in lowercase, the second one in upper, all uppercase, uh, and the last one just returns the number of characters. It doesn't, neither of these actually change the string. If you want to change the string, then you type in str equals to, let's say, lowercase str, and then you print out the str again. And if I run this now, then you will see that now this time str is already lowercase. So th these are the real, the simple ones. Then there is a slightly more complex function, which is called index. Index will get uh, normally two parameters. One of them is a string like this one. Uh, let's enlarge the font a bit. So the second one is the the first uh, parameter is the is a string, and that's what you can see here. And the second one is also a string that is usually shorter because we are looking for its location within the first parameter within the l longer string. So if you run index on this longer string, giving it cat, then it will return you 10 because that's the, the cat starts from the 10th character. Now index counts the character starting with zero. So that uh, this uh, capital T is actually zero. That's how it comes to C. It uh, comes to 10 at the C. If I run the same index function, uh, now giving it dog, then it will return minus 1, because in this string uh, there is only a cat, there is no dog. And uh, the way it returns error or failure is basically giving us minus 1. So if you run this, uh, call this function with an, a string that it's not, it doesn't appear in the original string that you will get minus 1. Maybe it might not be the most convenient one, but that's what we have to use. Uh, then you have to see that if I run the same call index on this string with a THE, capital T, it will return zero. And uh, that's just showing that uh, the index is zero based. So it will find this THE at the beginning and will return zero because that's how it starts. The next call, this one, returns 26 because index is uh, looking for the exact same string and this case sensitive as well so first the doesn't fit because that's a capital T so it will look for another the and there it will, it will find it now you might think that this index is looking for a word here but it's not the case it just looks for string uh, a substring which is just characters one after the other so that's in the next time example you can see that for example here we are looking for the string that's an E, letter E, and the space afterwards. And it will return us 2, because here yeah, you can see highlighted uh, the place where E and the space uh, appears. But as you can see, there is another, uh, another E and space here. And uh, the way you can reach that is that index actually can get a third parameter, and that's here uh, by chance as the number 3, uh, but it can be any number and then it will start its l searching from the third character uh, so it's actually the fourth character which is because we are starting counting the characters from zero so the third place the place number three and uh, therefore it will find the uh, the here at this uh, spot which is apparently uh, um, the 28th uh, place similarly if I call index and give it and a character E just for looking, but I give it uh, the number 3 just to st where to start from, then it will find the letter E, let's see, so this in the word jumped, there is also an E, so that's what, what uh, is going to be found. 
Uh, obviously this 3 can be any number here, so if I can start from 5 and it will uh, return the same value, let's run this uh, script just so you can see it, so you can see that the, the values are 10, minus 1, 0, 26, 2, 28, 18, this is the same value, doesn't matter where you start exactly, as long as you start before the appearance of the substring. Uh, and that's what index does. Uh, there is also another function which is related to it called rindex that does the same just looking from the right hand side. So if there, it's interesting if there are multiple occurrences of the same string then it will find the rightmost one of it. So running rindex on the same string and giving it uh, the substring e to it then it will return 39 because it will find this letter e. Uh, and our index can also have a third parameter that will tell it where to start from, from its posi position to start from looking for. So if I give 38, then it will find this letter here, returning the 38. And if I start from 37 here, then it will probably find this E returning a 33. So that's about index. And uh, the last one, which is probably the most interesting one, out of the functions that I'm showing now is substring. Substring uh, is actually the opposite of index. So in index you would get, you would know what you're looking for, what string you're looking for, you just don't know where it is. So you're looking for a, a location. In substring you know the location, you just don't know what is there and you want to see what's in that location. So substring will get normally a string, again this black cat climbed the green tree, uh, a number which is an offset, so it's the location, the beginning of the substring we are looking for in this original string. Again, it's zero based, so zero would mean the first character, and four means, so it's zero, one, two, three, four means this B. And the third parameter is the length of the substring we are fetching, so because it has five characters, it will return the string starting from this letter B, the f five characters. So that's the word black. So substring returns those values and obviously I can assign it to, so you, I didn't, uh, well actually I showed you uh, also in the LC example, uh, but in also in the index, you can assign that value to some kind of variable. Here too, I'm just uh, lazy, so I'm just printing it out immediately. So this call, this call will return the word black. Now in the next example, you can see that uh, the length is a negative number. So how would a negative number come there? Uh, instead of um, using that as a real length, what Perl does is say, saying that this 4 means how many characters from the left to leave off. And this number now says how many characters from the right not to include. So basically it says count 4 from the left, count from f 11 from the right, and whatever is in the middle that's what I want to get back. So that's what the black cat climbed D is was the, what it returns. You can even leave off the whole third parameter at all. And that would mean in this case, as you can see, just give me the string from the position 14 till the end, because I didn't say how long it would sh should take or how long it shouldn't take. So you just give it to from the position till the end. And here we can see that even the first parameter, the location, can be a negative number and that, uh, you probably ca already guessed, is counting from the end. So instead of saying it's, uh, I don't know, the length less 4, you just say less 4. And that it means that 1, 2, 3, 4 start from this posi position. And because in this, in this example here, I didn't give the number of characters, so it will give me all the string till the end. That's the, just the four letters tree. And obviously, as you can see in this example, you can actually give the third parameter as well, and then it will return you the two characters from the last four. So that's TR, and uh, let's just run it so we can see it. That's the TR here, right? And if I change it a little bit, for so for example, I put one here, then I run it, uh, then you can get only the T, right? And if I would give 3 and run, then I get the RE. So that's, you can understand it. 
and uh, the last example is a bit uh, funky. So up till now, uh, the, this call returned the substring, but the original $str, the original string, didn't change. In the last example, the return value is still the same, is defined by the first three parameters. But in the last example, in this example, we also have a fourth parameter, which is in this case a string called jumped from, uh, containing jumped from. And what happens is that in this case, Perl, the substring uh, function, will replace the, ver the string that was defined by these th three uh, parameters, will replace that substring by the new string. So because the 14.7 here, this 14.7, uh, defines the word climbed here. Uh, so the return value into $z will be climbed. That's what you can see here printed. But the $str will uh, have a different content and the word climbed will be replaced by the word jumped from, by the two words jumped from, substring actually. So in this case the st $str will contain the black cat jumped from the green tree. And as you can see, Perl doesn't care that the new string, new substring, is actually longer than the original one. It will just make sp enough space in the string. Or if you leave it out, so for example, let's just run it again. So you can see that the black cat jumped from the green tree. That works. Uh, what happens if I just put in the letter J and run it? Then you will see that the black cat J, the green tree whatever that would mean. So it doesn't really matter what the lengths are relative to each other. Uh, you can leave it also an empty string, but you have to have it there. And then Perl will, the substring will uh, cut out that part of the string and leave now in this case two spaces because the space before the word climbed and the space after it. So that's about substring and I hope you learned something and we'll return to the next um, part and if you're watching it on YouTube then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you, bye bye.